It's Nolan, Nolan, Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the Kid J. Nolan here. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music and entertainment breakdowns and commentary. As y'all know, we've been keeping up to date with all of these Diddy allegations, the investigation that's going on with Homeland Security and all of those things. The other day, I reported that Diddy sold all of his remaining shares in Revolt TV, meaning that he has completely exited the company. At that time, they were not ready to disclose who was actually the new buyer, the new owner of the company. It has not officially been released. However, there have been reports on who it is, and it's not who some of y'all thought or wanted to see get into that position. No diddy, all right? A lot of people were speculating that 50 Cent might be on the buyer's list, but me personally, I knew that would never happen because 50 Cent has been on P. Diddy's trail for the past 10, 15 years, if not longer. So he's been out in him. He's been saying how he's, you know, done some questionable things. He outed the Cassie thing before anybody ever really knew what he was talking about was true. He went on live radio and told people that he saw video footage of Cassie getting, having sexual relations with men not named Diddy, with him watching. You know what I'm saying? He said this years ago. So I knew there was not a chance in hell that Diddy would sell his company that he co-founded, put money into and built, you know what I'm saying, off whether it was his blood, sweat and tears or other mother because blood, sweat and tears. He would never hand the, the keys over to 50 Cent. I don't know why y'all thought he would, but I knew for a fact that wasn't the case. Now, getting into who is the new owner of Revolt. We're going to get into Mr. Richelieu Dennis. Now, I didn't really know who he was like that. I ain't going to lie. When, they, when this came out, I'm like, I don't know, bro. You know what I mean? But lo and behold, Richelieu Dennis will be the new owner of Diddy's TV venture, Revolt. Now, Diddy founded this network back in 2013, but after longtime girlfriend Cassie uh, back in November <clears throat> sued him, claiming that he had SA'd her and abused her. He sold off his shares of revolt. He actually stepped down as the CEO at that time. Now, as the dust settles from the shock and homeland security raids, um, his his boy Brandon Paul getting arrested for drug possession on his jet while the raids were taking place. All of this stuff hitting the fan. Here we are, right? Dennis actually made his fortune in the skincare business. He co-founded Shea Moisture in Harlem back in the 1990s, and he sold it to a household goods giant named Unilever. OK, did not know that Shea Moisture came from Richelieu Dennis. Never really questioned who created it. I knew it was in stores and I knew it was like a big deal before they actually got bought out. But um, never thought that a, a black man was behind that, you know. Um. Richelieu is also the owner of Essence Magazine. So he seems like somebody interested in putting out black media, upholding black media. It might be in better hands, honestly, because Diddy had never run any sort of media company outside of putting out music and disseminating his records to be shown and exploited via media. We never saw him in the position of running a company on that side. So at least we know Richelieu, for better or worse, Essence has been around for a while. Um, in 2018, he actually purchased Essence from Time. And uh, so he's been in the position over there for at least a few years. We'll see how it upholds. We'll see if they're able to produce shows, produce original content that people care about rather than acquiring licensing rights to other people's content, such as podcasts like Big Facts, like uh, Drink Champs, uh, State, of the, State of the Culture is gone. Uh, so all they really have are podcasts under the wing. I think they need some help. Okay, so we'll see what the plan is. Uh, um, what else we got here? So, yeah, reports say the deal is already done and they are getting ready to announce it in the upcoming days. Of course, they wanted to make the announcement first, but with blogs, gossip sites, insiders giving out information to, you know, anonymous sources and stuff, this was never going to be able to come out as they planned. 
they say. But of course, now with the raid and everything else going on, it will appear as though he is purchasing after the fact. But contrary to the belief, this was already happening behind the scenes. I think Diddy pretty much knew that the walls were about to start closing in on him. So he was getting all of his affairs in order. I think he's been planning on separating himself completely from the company. Again, he did step down from operations and stuff like that back in November. So with all of these investigations, all these lawsuits, he's coming out vehemently denying it. But we all knew the it's only so much smoke that we could he, that we could see out here before we get to the fire. All right. They state it was important to Sean to get a buyer that was African-American because he wants to keep the legacy of having a black owned business. He started it off that way and he wants it to continue on that path. Right. So. That's what we have on. Mr. Richelieu Dennis. Um, of course, with all of these updates happening, Diddy's lawyer came out and basically tried to call the investigation and the Homeland Security raids a witch hunt. They say that they're going to continue to fervently fight back every day against any and all allegations, and they're going to, they're going to be iron fisted towards anyone spewing out allegations against Diddy. We'll see just how effective that is, right? Now, in other Diddy news, we talked yesterday about young Miami and her involvement in this enterprise. I believe she is definitely a victim. Some people say she's not, but I feel like if she's selling her body, if she feels like they've, they've been in an on and off again in their relationship, perhaps she's not able to get away from him without law enforcement, you know, intervening and getting him away. We don't know how that situation goes. Her having to carry his drugs from Miami to Virginia for the something in the water festival. We don't know if that's something that she willfully did or if it was just like, hey, we need you to do the job and make sure it gets done. Or, you know, remember, we got videotapes, audio, anything that we got on you over the course of the last few years. It's hanging over her head. Some of y'all be like, hey, she chose to get down with this. And yeah, that's true. But the same can be said for anybody that's been involved, including Cassie. You know, although she may have been groomed her 18 years, did she not know right from wrong? I'm just saying, based on y'all's perspective, right? Young Miami, I know she gets flat because she's aggressive. She's boisterous. She's loud. She comes from a background of maybe pulling scams and doing questionable things. But that doesn't mean that she's irredeemable. It doesn't mean that uh, just because he puts her up to a specific task, that that's exactly what she wants to do at that specific time. He's leveraging his control over her because, again, as for everyone that comes into circumference with him, he records you in all of his premises. He records all of your activity. And just like he said to Lil Rod, you go against me, nigga, we're going to leak some shit out. So Lil Rod had to go get the feds <laughs> for protection. So. I'm not so quick to to throw Young Miami under the bus. I think I've done enough of that in her music career, but also discovered among the other sex workers and escorts under Diddy's umbrella is Daphne Joy. And I wasn't really familiar with her game. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know who she was like that. Turns out Miss Daphne is 50 cents baby mama. OK, and we're not talking about Marcus. We're talking about 50 cents more recent son, right? And because of seeing her in the documents, 50 Cent has come out not only once, but maybe like two or three times, made note of it. Uh, matter of fact, back in 2022, when Diddy was getting his Lifetime Achievement Award and all of these different things, Miss Daphne was seen in the crowd cheering him on. There's also photos of Diddy on his private jet. And if you look closely enough in the reflection of his glasses, you can see Miss Daphne on the other side. And 50 Cent, even back then, was like, dang. He had a picture of him and his son saying, oh, dang, son, look at your mama over there with Diddy. So back then he knew something was up. Right. Now. She pops up in this lawsuit. No, not that she's um, responsible for anything, but her name has now come up in, in the lawsuit as one of Diddy's sex workers, escorts. So now Diddy is trying to get full custody of his son. Right. So here we go. 
50 Cent plans to seek sole custody of his and Daphne Joy's son, Sire, after she was named an alleged sex worker in a lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs in February, according to a new report. Because remember, just a few days ago, the lawsuit was amended. New information was put in there. New names have been put in there. So a lot of people are catching the, the blowback and the windfall thinking that they was exempt. Now shit is getting a little creepy. Right. So. Given the latest developments and news of Daphne Joy's involvement in the Diddy lawsuit, 50 is going for sole custody of his son, a source close to the situation told Us Weekly. 50 Cent's rep had no comment and Joy didn't immediately return requests for comment. Right? So, apparently, 50 Cent and Miss Daphne dated from the time of 2011 to 2012. Uh, they say that she also has an OnlyFans. Again, I don't know this woman from a can of paint. Did not know she was an OF girl. So <laughs> if you're willing to do OF, you kind of you kind of setting yourself to be up on the pipeline to escortion. Not extortion, but extortion. All right. They split shortly after now 12-year-old Sire's birth. 50 Cent also shares son Marquise, Marquise, not Marcus, 27, with his ex, Shaniqua Tompkins. Upon learning that Joy, along with young Miami and model Jade Ramey, I thought Jade was Miami's cousin. Unfortunately, no, that's not the truth. Miami's cousin is identified as just that in the lawsuit. So Jade is model Jade Ramey. And they are all mentioned in the $30 million lawsuit filed by Rodney Lil Rod Jones. So, yeah, there we have that. So it's at least three women that are consistently on Diddy's payroll to go smash on these higher up, you know, these big wigs that don't want to, you know what I mean? They want to have some discreet romance type stuff or whatever the fuck it is that they're looking for. That's what's going down. Now, Miss Daphne Joy hasn't directly addressed being an alleged sex, sex worker, but she did share a cryptic message on social media after she made headlines stating, thank you, God, for your love. I hope God can save you. Because <laughs> type of response is that. Oh, shit. Again. The walls are closing in on a lot of people right now, man. What is done in the dark is now coming into the light. And what we're seeing in our light ain't looking all that bright. Ain't that a bit. Okay. Now, with all of this damning, damning information coming out on Diddy, there are some people out there that are trying to uh, uphold his honor, defend him in one way or another. So. Of those people, we've got Tyrese. I'm going to read what Tyrese had to say. He says, what I can't do and what I won't do is downplay the laughter, the fun, the energy, the inspiration, the award shows, the studio sessions, the most legendary parties and events I've ever attended in my life. You stupid mother effer, man. I, bro, used to really like Tyrese, like his music. You know, I think he's got a weird temper on him, a weird temperament, but we haven't heard allegations as serious as Diddy going on this guy. But you're willing to sit up here and talk about dancing and bouncing and shaking your ass to this man's music and going to his parties. What the hell does that have to do with trafficking? What the hell does that have to do with S.A.? What the hell does that have to do? Excuse me, Cassie paid her off immediately. What do you think he paid her off for? You damn sure ain't paying motherfuckers off. You still fighting with Home Depot. But you want to talk about some weak ass parties. Let's keep this thing going. And I also can't act as if my high school backyard parties Throughout South Central L.A. wasn't the craziest parties ever because of the bad boy on slew. I think you mean on slot of hit records. 
I don't condone nor do I support abuse, bullying, sexual assault or anything that is currently being alleged. But what I can't do is turn the blinds on how much this means to me and all of us. We don't give a fuck about that bad boy logo or none of that music, dog. I, will, I don't got to play that shit. I love Biggie to like to, to the moon. I couldn't tell you the last time I turned on some of his shit, not because I don't like him and it's not because it is. It's just like, dog, the shit is in the past. <laughs> I'm not turning on these niggas records like that just to live in nostalgia for the rest of my life, bro. If all these niggas got to go, they just got to go. What, what my dog saying? Eight mile. But oh, well, if you got to go, then you got to go. Yeah. Shout out to Lotto. Not the. Not, well, shout out to that Lotto, too. Anyway. He keeps going. How much he means to all of us and what he has done for the community of music and culture. Don't worry, I'm the only one crazy enough to jump out and say what most of you want to say. No, we don't want to say that shit, bro. But you are the one crazy enough to jump out. You've shown that numerous times on your own behalf. You ain't got to <laughs> you ain't got to put a disclaimer. Um say what most of you want to say, but you don't have the balls to do so because it's very normal for people to be going through a rough patch. A rough patch. You You speak from your own perspective trying to put yourself in Diddy's shoes, my nigga. Cut that shit out. Your shoes cannot feel Diddy's shoes, and his shoes are soiled, sully, muddied. I think you shouldn't want to play. This ain't like Mike, my nigga. Anyway. <laughs> it's crazy. Going through a rough patch, and we all sit back and make a mockery of it. But I'm not going to do that. I'm praying for Diddy, his kids, his family, his mother, and all of the alleged victims that's in the middle of trying to simply have their voices to be heard. I love this brother. He's been nothing but kind and generous towards me, and that's the way I feel. Praying and praying for more of a better outcome of all of this is happening. God bless you, Diddy. If you ever need to call me and just need a listening ear, I'm right here, bro. That nigga will never call you. I'm sorry. He will not. And he ain't going to be inviting you to no more fucking parties neither. So get that shit out your head. Foolishness. Then you got people out here talking about, oh, that's how y'all want to do a black man. Do y'all not understand this black man has been doing all of the alleged crimes, all of the things that people are saying to fellow black people, primarily you stupid mother F's. Tyrese ain't the only one digging deeper into the into the annals of black history. We have Slim Thug and his Super Mario Wario beard coming out, speaking on this man's behalf as if Diddy gives two shits about him either. Good God. The black man who came so far almost to a billion dollars fall down. That's our inspiration. for. It ain't too many of us. I don't want to see. They took Kanye down. We forgot about Kanye. And the good thing he uh able to do his own man. That's how I look at it, man. We losing another billionaire over allegations at this point. Still ain't no criminal charges. You know what I'm saying? We only got about one billionaire left. Who, Jay-Z? That's the only motherfucker left. Everybody else. Let's take the per off of it and, and who that person is, right? Man, listen. If, look at who is wishing this dude fail. You know what I'm saying? It's his own people. It's his own people cheering him, laughing, and did he did it, and coming up with new slogans for him. It's his own people, man. Like, so take note of this. Man, you would think the motherfucker, he thought a year or two ago when we were popping Ciroc, he thought that we would ride or die for him, man. Like, he thought that the motherfucking world of hip hop would stay down and over, you know, especially without him having a case, like, especially without him having a case, he would think, hey, man, they're going to ride for me. I, I live for this hip-hop shit. I live and die this shit. The hip-hop community is going to ride for my innocence, he would assume, I'm sure. Say, if he did that, then whatever he get, he get. But so far, I haven't seen no criminal charges. So out for that, I'm going to just sit back and hope for the best, you know. I don't want to see nobody go down, man. And for people to celebrate that, love that, want to see that, it's weird to me, man. So, like, it made me want to stay in the house. And people you would never, never knew they existed want to see this man, whatever. And if you if, if you work for me, if, if I uh came up under you and you over me, 
Fuck you. I don't want to do no business with you. Fuck you. I don't want to see you in the streets. But do I want to see you go to jail for life? Nigga, like, you help me be a part of my play, regardless if I like you not. All right. <laughs> That's all we got from Slim Thug. I already said what I needed to say about Slim Thug's perspective on this whole black man inspiration, black billionaire bullshit, man. He should have thought about that shit before he got involved with these motherfuckers, man. Uh, don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me Diddy was finna buy NBC because clearly he was finna sell his own shit. You know what I'm saying? So let's just let's just let this thing play out. Don't be mad at the people for reporting what's going on. Don't be mad at people that feel like this shit is justified because it's a lot of people that went down. This this nigga shot a woman in the face. She say for years it was him not Sean. You know what I mean? In the middle of a club, just start banging out, shot this woman in the face. She's been consistent with her story since day one. Right? They had to settle with her outside of court not that long ago. It took a long enough time for it to even come to fruition that she got that. She's still out here speaking about her experience. Cassie, they paid her within 24 hours. If there was nothing to be rectified, if there was no wrongdoing, why would you pay her an undisclosed amount of money immediately? Right? Say, oh, that was an insurance play. Yeah, insurance said we're not playing with this shit. That's the insurance play. All right. So, yeah, man, I don't know what's wrong with these niggas, but y'all got y'all got my southern dialect coming out over this bullshit, man. Then we got uh, some other people that are taking a little bit more of an open stance, talking about the experiences that they've encountered or seen or witnessed over the years. Number one, we've got uh, TV personality Torre. He claims his male family member abruptly ended his internship with Diddy after Diddy allegedly wanted them to spend the night together. You know what I mean? So here's Torre talking about what he knows or understands to have happened with his male family member. Could have been cousin, could have been nephew. We don't know. I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay, I, I... I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said, yes. And they were flying around one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member like well, what happened and they wouldn't say yeah and i'm like what what do you, why did it end he wouldn't yeah. say and years later they finally came out and this is a male yeah and said that uh puff had said come home stay the night with me or the internship is over and they said absolutely not he said absolutely not uh -huh. and the internship ended uh but from there i was like oh like oh, this is this is God. how it goes okay yeah. okay all right and the interesting thing is that I see people in the comments of this video saying, hey, hearsay is crazy. Well, here's the thing about hearsay. Y'all kind of come up with these weird, these weird things, man. Like y'all base your perspective on who's telling the truth and who's lying based on who's accomplished the most, who's got the most money, who's done the most iconic shit in the world. But. It's kind of like a winners and losers thing. Like, oh, you must be a loser in life. You know what I mean? Well, you ain't got nothing going on today. Why should we believe you type shit? But here's the thing. Again, if it were you and you told your family member about what happened to you or you told this person or you filed your lawsuit and nobody wanted to support you, no lawyer would touch it or whatever the case may be, you would be sitting in the same seat of someone else saying hearsay is crazy. Everything is hearsay until it goes through the proper channels, whether that be the lawsuits, whether that be the investigations, whether that be a court hearing, trial, right, depositions, whatever the fuck it needs to be. There is a criminal process that has to go through before all of this can come to fruition, right? This is going to be a long, drawn-out situation. They're not getting Homeland Security and all these motherfuckers involved for no reason. This ain't no young thug shit, although it could be Rico. Don't come to my house. 
This nigga Slim Thug talking about something, man. It make me want to stay in the motherfucking house. Well, if you coming out, if if you coming out the house means that you could possibly end up with RICO charges, sexual <laughs> allegations, abuse, or anything of the like, yeah, you might need to stay your motherfucking ass at home. Because if you ain't involved with none of that type of shit, why would anybody have anything to say about you? Clearly, ain't nobody said nothing about you yet. You ain't got to stay at home. Maybe just stay off the camera with your bullshit rhetoric. That's all we saying, man. And let this go. Let it be what it is. You're, you're welcome to have your opinion, but just like all opinions, they're not going to be accepted. Not all my opinions are accepted. Not everybody loves everything that I say. And that's okay. That's fine. You know, I don't, I don't purport myself to be an all knowing figure. I'm not omniscient. I've never said that I was. It's just my perspective. You know what I mean? And there's others that have accounts that have come out and shared their stories. You know what I'm saying? And all the stories seem to be leading up, like I said, to a specific destination and we haven't yet veered off. Right? We've got people like Uncle Luke. He doesn't have the experience but Uncle Luke says, don't bite the hand that feeds you and suggest that Diddy suing multi-billion dollar liquor company Diageo is why he's being targeted by the feds for sex trafficking. Right. So he's basically saying when he opened up that multi-million dollar lawsuit saying that they were basically um, pigeonholing De Leon, his tequila, that they were only marketing it to black people when he wanted it to be an international universal liquor. They weren't putting the marketing budget behind him. He wanted to sue for some sort of racial discrimination. They got him to fuck up out of there. They separated him from De Leon, which he owned, and Ciroc, which he was a brand ambassador. And, um, you know, whatever the fuck they gave him position for years, they got him out of there. And next thing you know, shit went left. So it's very possible that they did do this. But I don't think it's about the fact that he did that. It's about the fact that they knew what he had going on. They might have been leveraging it against him any fucking way. And like, you gonna play with us when we know all this shit about you, all these allegations, da da da. All right, play with us. You you serious? You want to go left? Because you know I'm good with the left hand too, like Silk the Shocker. Some of y'all ain't going to catch that. But, um, you know... So I think it's just very interesting. We got Gene Deal, who's been talking about Diddy for 15 years on any YouTube channel that will have him. He's been doing art of dialogues for the longest. He says that the Homeland Security raiding his house as part of an in investigation. They're going to try to use uh, Brendan Paul as a star witness in the investigation, being that they caught him on possession Right. They're going to try to make him flip. It's just so much that goes into this. It's going to get deeper than we can even imagine. We've got former extra host Tanika Ray. She came out. She was a former dancer for Diddy. She claims that she also has some horrific stories about him that she will not go into. But she did put out a statement saying this. Oh, yeah. Women hold a lot in order to function every day in a man's world. Unfortunately, we can compartmentalize our pain and carry on. We utilize the experience as a lesson and move differently. If I told my story in 1996, then what? I just knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and kept my space. I was on the voter die airplane, kept my space. I interviewed him for his projects and kept my space. Nothing that is happening is surprising. Ladies keep space to heal and move on is key. Gathering to incriminate is goals. But in this wild world with a broke ass system, our healing is priority. Shame on all those men that let this continue. Shame on me, maybe, for prioritizing my mental health, some would say. But after working in a place that snatches souls, mine is intact and of the light. I saved myself. Now, if someone needs to, me to pile on my story, give me a call. But I think Cassie got it. Right? All these people, If you, I mean, if y'all think the world is lying, everybody's coming to the front with just bold-faced, crazy claims conspiracy you know what i mean you can exist in that space if you want to but we out here living the real world man we knew this nigga was an unsavory character for decades and we let it go because he had charisma he could say take that take that he could get on there and get you jiggy with it like on some will smith shit harlem shake you know what i mean long as y'all shaking your ass he was good 
a la Tyrese and what he talking about. Same thing with that other nigga, Robert. But I'm telling you, it ain't enough fucking sounds and music for me to be on that train. You feel me? No diddy. I'm just telling y'all what it is. It's a lot of different ways. We got former bad boy artist Enes coming out. He said some new things today. It was first that he came out and said he ain't seen nothing. He ain't never seen nothing like that. Da, 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 da. He was trying to get people to divert their attention away from the situation. Now we got interview footage of Enes talking about how people get selected and gain access to the private parties and all of the standards and how people going to approach you. So let's hear what the hell he had to say, because one minute you were singing one tune, the next minute you're singing another. Right. What's the, what happened? He always respected me as a um, lyricist and as a writer. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept me up there from 2002 to 2009. Well, did you at least see any parties or been to his parties? The infamous Diddy parties that everybody talks about? I've been to the parties. And it's tough for you to really talk about this, Ness, because you was there from 2006 to 2009. I mean, didn't the band album come out in 2003? So you went back and wrote for him for some more work. And then it's been... Another 15 years since you've been around there. I'm sure the parties have evolved. I'm sure a lot has changed. But let's see what you got to say. I'm sorry. But like I said, I I, I don't know. They select you. You be you're, you're selected. Be, be, so, be more descriptive. I'm gonna be think. more selective. You yeah. have to fit a, a certain description. Mm -hmm. You have to fit a certain mannerism for you to be led down that hallway with the door. Whoa, 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 whoa. He, he whoa. Has, he, Yo, he don't, don't do that. that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you real. On, you on. have to fit a certain hold description, on, hold on, hold on. a certain mannerism, Ness, a body on. type. Why are these niggas saying hold on while he's still talking? Shut your dumb ass up and let the man say what he got to say. Hold of on. type of mannerism, of type of mentality, for you to get hold, hold on, led Ness, down Ness. that hallway with the doors. I can't stand these dumb ass uh, barbershop ass podcast, man. It'd be 12 niggas in the room all trying to fight to say something. Don't nobody got a proper mic on. The engineer don't know how to goddamn do. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing. I got a one man operation. Sometimes I fuck up. Sometimes everything good. But it'd be 12 niggas fighting to get on one mic. Like, like niggas on Clubhouse. One mic. One mic. Shut your dumb ass up. You ask him a question. Let him say what he got to say. Wait a minute. Tell him out. What I want to ask you at that time. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 why? Why am I being excluded from this? You didn't, that didn't like raise your antennas of, of that? Me being young and at that time I just wanted to be famous and I wanted to be a superstar off of rap yeah, music. Well, some you didn't want to be in those parties? Nah, was, nah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's behind that closed door, right? Bro, but it wasn't out like it is now. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, right. but you want to know. You can go you on the internet. And but he's probably not looking at it It's like not that. out like it is right. now. It was still taboo. Nobody was speaking on it. Yeah. You, you couldn't speak on it. You didn't have a network of people that could huddle up and talk about it. Yeah, the, that outwork, that network of people outweighed yours by far. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you would get pushed into a little corner I'm talking about, talking about who's though. this and like, who's that. Yeah. You would run into a brick wall because yeah. it would be those on the other side. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I know I, what I you're wanna, saying. Let I, me keep it a bean with you. The way they attack you is through photo shoots and video shoots. They send in the stylist. If you're getting your hair braided, one of those two of guys might be not the way you think they should be. Mm -hmm. And if you're showing them the most love and yippity yappity with them, that's the battlefield. That's where they see, oh, he had a lot of rap for the guy yeah, over yeah, here. Right, 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 ah, yeah, he's yeah, one yeah. of them. All right, all right. That's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, that's what I'm he's talking saying about. they can see who it is, who, yeah. who's who. Yeah, they just yeah. go, yeah. Less, I wear my pants off my ass. I wear jersey as I smoke weed all day. I'm bringing bitches in and out the house. He's not, Ness is that's not right. the candidate. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Ness is not the Ness is not the candidate for the bullshit. You wasn't like that. Nah, so let me ask you this. Hold on. Let me ask you Who out the group of that, who y'all was with, was kind of, kind of... I don't know. I, I was paying attention to the up. bitches. I don't know. I feel like he's trying to protect somebody there, and I don't blame you for protecting them, right? To say, I was focused on the chicks. Nah, you wasn't blind. You wasn't slick Rick out of one side of your face now. Let's be real about this. But I'm glad you didn't throw nobody under the bus from your crew and from your group. Because that would have been a little bit fucked up. You know what I mean? So that's all of the people. Well, not all of the people. There's plenty more shit out there. There's cocaine, uh, the artist and producer, singer. 
got his accounts of Diddy wanting him to spend spend exorbitant time with him and stuff like that. He wasn't with it. It's enough people out here saying what they saying. Some of these folks could be lying, but I think there's enough true accounts that are being put out there. This stuff has been rumbling. This stuff is not brand new. Like, just like that other nigga, there was plenty of information. There was plenty of signs. But again, y'all wanted to worry about the party. Y'all cared about the songs that the DJs spin every night. Nigga, I got a fucking, I got every song I could ever want on these streaming platforms, nigga. I ain't worried about that shit, man. If niggas gotta go, give them they walking papers. Same way that nigga would discard of anyone else when they were no longer of service when it came to writing, producing, or giving him the magic. Why are y'all so hesitant to let this nigga fly to his destination? Shit is weird to me, man. Let me know what y'all think about this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. Hey, you can't remain on the outside all your life. Some of y'all be lurking and just be seeing, hey, is he on? Is he on? Is he on? Man, go ahead and hit that subscribe. Become an insider. Quit playing. You know what I mean? Get <laughs> Come on. Much love, respect. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace. King of my city and cul de sac. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block.